Hi everyone, I'm here at New York University today to talk to Professor Matt Kleban of the Department of Physics about the multiverse. Matt, can you tell me what the multiverse is? So people mean a lot of different things by that term, and I've never liked it that much actually, because for me, universe is by definition everything there is, and so multiverse is, doesn't really make much sense. But the way uh, a lot of people mean that is just to say that the part of the universe we can see is a lot smaller than the whole thing. And the reason that might be the case is we're limited in what we can see by what's called a horizon. So when we look through the most powerful telescopes that we have, we look as far as we can, there's a limit to how far we can see. We can see tens of billions of light years, the distance that light travels in tens of billions of years. And beyond that, uh, the universe becomes opaque. Yeah. Not because at this time it becomes opaque, but because far in the past, the universe was like the inside of the sun. And uh, the inside of the sun is, is opaque. If you beam a laser pointer at the sun, it doesn't come out the other side. The whole universe was like that if you go far enough back. And when you look far away, you're looking back in time. You're seeing the universe as it was when light was emitted from it back then, that distance. So there's a horizon that limits how far we can, we can see, and we just don't know much about what's beyond it. So there's no reason to think that what we're seeing is the whole universe any more than if you stand on a hill and look around, what you're seeing is the whole Earth. And so most people think that there is a larger universe out there. When you talk about the multiverse, you're saying that the larger universe that's out there is very different from the part we're seeing. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're standing on this hill and you see, I don't know, a plane around you, maybe with some pine trees or something, it doesn't mean that the entire Earth is a plane covered with pine trees. There can be lots of other, lots of variety. And so that's the most sort of basic notion of the multiverse. So then, so basically, just to repeat, so you have what we can see of our universe, which may continue, even though we don't have access to that, just because we can't see beyond the horizon. But then there could be other things out there which are not this bubble that we call the universe, right? That's what so, you mean. Yeah, so in a lot of theories in physics, um, there are multiple phases. So you can have the same substance, fundamentally, which looks very different and has very different properties. For instance, dihydrogen oxide can be water, can be ice, can be water vapor, and those three phases are very different from each other. So a lot of fundamental, what we think might be fundamental theories of physics predict that there are phases of the laws of physics, almost, that, that uh, the particles we're made of, for instance, might not exist or might have very different properties if we were in a different phase, and that those phases can exist. And they probably do exist somewhere in the universe. So if you were to go far enough in a straight line, you'd eventually come to a part of the universe where the particles have very different properties. And those can be very exotic, those phases. You can have different numbers of large dimensions, even. Because in some of these theories, there's uh, more, than, more than the three dimensions of space that we're used to. And some of those extra ones that we think They're maybe there, but they're, they're too small for us to see. They might actually be large enough that you could take a walk in them. Only you wouldn't be able to take a walk in them because the stuff you're made of doesn't exist over there. So these phases can be very exotic, very different from what we see around us. There's a variety of different theories that can, that can predict this. String theory is maybe the most prominent, and that's where a lot of, this, a lot of these ideas came from in the first place. And the reason you have all these phases in string theory is actually because of the extra dimensions. So string theory has this mathematical peculiarity that it predicts that there have to be 10, well, nine space dimensions in one time. And since we don't see nine space dimensions, we see three, we've got to hide six of them somehow. And there's a way to do that, which uh, is called compactification. Essentially, if, if those six dimensions are curled up, if they're small enough, that everything that we're used to, including ourselves, fills those dimensions uniformly. And, and in that case, you just you don't even notice they're there. To detect them requires an experiment that can probe very, very short length scales about the size of these dimensions. Um, <clears throat> but depending on, there's, there's many choices you make when you compactify these dimensions, and depending on how you do it, you get different laws of physics at uh, larger distance scales. In other words, if you don't have access to this very powerful microscope that can see down and see those dimensions, um, if you don't have that, then the physics to you looks very different depending on precisely how those dimensions are curled up.
you have these possible phases out there uh, of the multiverse, right? And the question is, could we ever know they exist? Mm -hmm. You know, are they physically, they are mathematically plausible, but they are physically falsifiable, meaning can you have any idea, you know, that they are really there or not? Yeah, so my contention is that we can uh, receive signals from them, which would prove beyond any reasonable doubt that there are, in fact, other phases, that there is a multiverse of this sort. And furthermore, that we could, we could make a different sort of detection that would falsify the idea that there, are, uh, that there are other regions of our universe, at least within the class of multiverses that most people have, have, uh, have been working. So I think this idea is both predictive and falsifiable. Predictive in the sense that it makes it predicts signals that can't be produced by any other mechanism we know. Are of. you sure of that though? Because that's a absolute. That's a very strong claim. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, I'm sure of it within the class of multiverses that I understand. Now again, this term multiverse is a slippery one. People mean different things by it. So I would no, say, I mean. So basically, you're saying that. Um, telling a story, right? One time, a long time ago. Uh, uh, nearby universe or whatever you want to call it, phase sort of grazed by ours and sort of collided in a very soft way, I imagine, because otherwise we wouldn't be here. And that <coughs> would leave some imprint in our universe that we could see in the cosmic microwave background. So the, the two questions that people tend to ask about this, one is, um, have you found anything or have, are people looking and what has, what, what's the story so far on this? Mm -hmm. Right, so, so <clears throat> um, this is all very new. Uh, the first predictions for what these signals would look like were made less than 10 years ago by me and, and other people here at NYU. And uh, there have been a number of searches for, for these signals in data from satellite observatories. Some of those searches seemed to find significant evidence and others did not. So I would say the situation is there's probably no evidence for any signal. Um, more data is coming. One of the effects of these collisions is to produce a pattern in the polarization of this cosmic microwave background light and there's not to, the, to date been a high quality map of the polarization released. So there is more information coming. Another effect is on large scale structure, the structure of galaxies and stars. And there's constantly new information there. So we haven't seen it yet with any, any kind of certainty. It's possible that we still will. It's also possible that everything I'm saying is correct and there, was, there were bubble collisions that we could have detected but they're simply too faint for us to be able to see. And in that case, we might never know. Uh, we could easily live in a situation where all of this stuff is real but we'll never be able to uh, uh, measure it for sure. There is this guy from England, Bernard Carr, who you probably know, who made a statement which is kind of provocative, which is, if you don't want God, you better have the multiverse. <laughs> which is basically about the initial condition problem, mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. issue that we, you know, mm -hmm. why is it this way? Well, hey, the multiverse will tell you, you don't need a fine tuner, kind of cosmic mm -hmm. DJ there to, to be doing this thing, right? So, um, I wonder where you stand on this, you know, sort of more philosophical position. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, do you feel like, I mean, given what's going on with particle physics right now, it's supersymmetry, having these issues with the LHC and stuff, and um, how do you feel in terms of the future of this field, you know, of particle physics and string theory in general? Well, I, I think we've been fooling ourselves into thinking there should be a simple, elegant answer to these questions. I mean, it's platonic, it's beautiful, Exactly, right? I was just going to say, Plato had an idea <laughs> that there are these platonic solids, and so somehow everything had to be based on them. He even had this kind of theory of chemistry that you could combine two tetrahedra and form a tube or whatever. And, I mean, you know, there was certain uh, materials were made out of one kind of platonic solid, other materials. Were made. And um, actually, that idea wasn't totally wrong. Um, a lot of the principles of modern physics are rather similar to that in terms of symmetries and so forth. But... If you'd asked Plato to predict, I don't know, how far away the sun was, the Earth was at the center, the sun was some distance away, the other planets maybe some other distance, you probably would have come up with an idea that it had something to do with platonic solids. There were theories like this. Mm -hmm. People thought they could predict things like that. Right. Now like we Kepler know, did. Kepler, right. but now we know that you can have planetary systems around stars with many different values of the radii of the orbits. 
you can have many different types of planets. Um, the Earth is not at the center of the universe. Human beings are not unique. Our whole intellectual history has been a series of punctures to our perception of our self-importance. Right? We thought we were at the center. We thought we knew the answers. We thought there was something special about uh, what we knew so far. And no, it always turned out there was a huge other layer of complication that was way beyond what we could have imagined before. I don't see this as very different. I mean, we don't know it's true. It might not be. Maybe there is no multiverse. But to me, it's a natural extension of this chain of, of, um, this chain of, uh, of logic, that, that there should be much more than what we can see. And if there are all of these phases, then all of our efforts in undercovering the laws of physics, not to mention biology and chemistry, all of the progress we made in science is a tiny pinprick in the surface of this complexity that lies underneath it. There's this huge number of possible phases, and we're just looking at a little bit of the physics of one of those. So not only are we insignificant in the universe, that our knowledge of physics is insignificant in all of the possible different versions of physics that one could have.